Okay, cool. Uh, so I, I was, I'm hoping that um, uh, the, the, the kind of the, the, the email that was sent out was clear enough so it was easy enough to, to uh, install the um, Vince Fusion. Um, I could probably say something about Vince. So, uh, Vince Fusion is like a state estimation um, and SLAM, if you will, um, library. It was made by these guys in Hong Kong. Um, it's, I, I would imagine that it's one of those like the state of the art currently that we have. Um, it's actually based on a Kalman filter. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do some parameter tuning and basically seeing how these things work in real time. So um, I believe what I've, what I've asked you to do is, is getting, um, getting Vince Fusion uh, kind of downloaded. So this was using a, a Docker, hoping that was successful. From then on, um, there were a number of data sets. There's one data set, the kind of the seminal UROC or uh, the, the, um, the ETH uh, kind of UAV um, data set. Um, that's kind of a data set that's being used. Uh, for those who don't really use SLAM or haven't used SLAM in kind of the practical capacity, you would find that UROC is basically the data set just to have mainly because um, every single, or pretty much every single, um, uh, kind of SLAM implementation will make use of it somehow, be it just to confirm that you have downloaded and installed everything properly or whether or not your computer is actually able to run this in real time. Um, and then I'm also asked you to download a, a data set that I found called Aqualock. This was uh, a data set actually purely from underwater scenarios. Um, just one or two bags. The idea there is going to be because Vince Fusion will include or includes um, kind of a setup file for the UROC um, data set, uh, which basically means that you don't really need to perform any kind of adaptation of, of parameters or anything. All you have to do is just run it and it should, in theory, should run. And this is what I want, to, uh, what, this is what I want you to do in the first uh, half an hour. And on the, in the last 30 minutes, what would, I thought would be uh, very kind of uh, useful for people who are going to use SLAM in the future, perhaps, is how to adapt um, an, a new data set that includes calibration files, that includes um, everything that you need to do um, to uh, um, kind of a SLAM implementation such as a Vince Fusion. So I thought this, this is actually something that I've done plenty of times when I was doing robotics back in the day, well, a few months ago. And, um, um, uh, and this, is, this is something that I've done kind of extensively. And, and so if I, could, if I could just kind of tell you that this is, this is important if you, were to, uh, if you were to use kind of uh, SLAM algorithms that are currently available. Um, in an like open source uh, capacity. So I'm hoping that you have all of that. Raise your hand if you have and it works, or if you tested it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so for those who haven't, um, would it be too much if I would ask you to join into some groups that you have at least one person at least? So this is basically going to be a more discussion, if you will, on how to do this, but effectively, um, hands-on and kind of visual experience of, of seeing SLAM and, and seeing how it works is, I think, the must. So if you can separate yourself into some groups that ha do have uh, this implementation working, and then we can start from there. <coughs> <coughs> So uh, guys, don't worry, don't, don't try to uh, put this in. Uh, this is just for re reference. If you go on uh, Vince Fusion GitHub, uh, you can basically copy paste this um, and then uh, basically change your path to wherever this config file for the UROC is. So this would be so much easier if, if, you, uh, if you were to do this. Like a, a walk around. Um, so you seem to have had some good handle on this and I can basically want to talk about the exercise to do. So the first exercise obviously is to get it to work. Well done. Uh, I guess you'll pass. Um, and now what I want you to do is to actually start playing with the parameters um, and see how the, how the reading and how the estimation will change. So 
some familiar, um, some familiar uh, kind of uh, nomenclature, if you will. There's, there's a number of IMU parameters which are actually the noise, the, the standard deviations of measurement noise. So this is something that you can estimate. You can estimate it with calibration, or you can just estimate it kind of empirically. But this is something that you can change and have a look at how this affects the, the, the readings and how this affects how well the state is, is being estimated. <clears throat> Quite interesting as well. The feature tracker parameters. Um, what this basically governs is one the amount of features in your um, in your uh, kind of in the scene, and also the distance between the uh, between the features. So what you can control here is whether or not you are controlling or whether or not you're tracking features, kind of a lattice of features in a whole screen, or whether you can um, whether you the algorithm picks kind of a cluster of features in a specific place and it tries to track that. Now, the advantages and disadvantages of tracking a cluster, right? You can lose track of cluster a lot easier unless you have a very feature-rich kind of um, textured environment. So this is, uh, this is, um, uh, this is the, the YAML file they're actually passing right now to, this, uh, to the uh, run.sh. And if you go inside there, you'll find the, these parameters. And you, yeah, you basically have a look at this. And if you can break it and fix it, then yes. Okay, guys, uh, can I just ask very quickly, um, what stage are we at, basically? Can you just shout? Uh, have, you, have you done, played around with parameters, changed stuff, and then you've seen what the results might be, or you haven't? Okay. There is a third exercise that's probably going to take the most time, so I'm wondering if I should kind of keep it simple or whether to let you loose on, on the exercise three, mainly, mainly because this one is going to be, I think, the most productive and the most interesting for people to, to know. So I wonder if, if that should be the... What do we do with those parameters? What do we change? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to... Yeah, we're going to talk about this. Okay, guys, so um, we're going to move on to exercise number three, obviously, because of the uh, kind of an interest of time. Um, uh, so the third exercise is kind of the most, most challenging. The idea is that we have a new data set and you want to make it work with this current, uh, with, the, with the algorithm. The parameters that you saw for the UROC implementation, is not, they're not going to, going to work for the, this new data set. And this is, like every camera is different, the calibration is different, you're going to have different ty noise types. So what, you, what I'd like you to do is, um, I hope you have downloaded the, the calibration files for the Aqualog data set, along with the da um, Aqualog data set. And if you have, I would like you to try and implement uh, the Aqualog data set with these calibration files in the Vince, uh, Vince Fusion um, algorithm. So I'd like you to try and um, yeah, to implement that and see if it works. And if you don't, last five minutes, I can show you how it works on my computer. <laughs> Yep. I should also mention. So I have some pro tips for you. Um, so uh, the the logic that you saw in in Europe, So the the number like a, there's like a structure to the folder uh, kind of tree. What you want to do is you kind of want to follow exactly the same logic as Europe. So the parameter files are going to be exactly the same. There's a format to the parameter files that you can use, and you can uh, you know ultimately reuse. But remember that Europe sometimes the the one that you've been using is mono or stereo. Just remember that. E whatever you've used, because it's probably free to, to use, remember that Aqualock is only mono. So there's a, there's a, there's a specific challenge uh, with that, mainly because you, have, um, you only have one camera to uh, estimate the scale. So that's quite interesting as well. And finally, I gave you a few files you should maybe concentrate on. And this is basically what I mean is you should copy that and try to implement the, the filter for, yeah, for Aqualock. So whatever you have here, Whatever you've passed in terms of the YAML file, you should basically create a new YAML file with the camera calibrations re related to, uh, to Aqualock and see if it works. So time start.
Okay, guys, so this is a, a working uh, example of the exercise three. Uh, thank you, Olaya, for getting it to work. And you can basically see how uh, you can utilize a Vins fusion in, a, in an underwater scenario, right? Um, the interesting part, if you were to compare whatever you've seen in um, whatever you've seen using the Euro data set and what you're seeing here is that obviously there is a problem with difference. There's there's issues with things just floating around in mid space and things like that are going to cause trouble uh, for the implementation for SLAM. But ultimately, um, if you have an implementation or like if you have parameters, if you, if you find parameters robust enough such that you can track this um, somewhat accurately, you can you can ultimately uh, get a good implementation and get a get a working system if you were to yeah. But it takes time. <laughs> yeah. So, any questions? <laughs> I can help oh, if you want. Step step. <laughs> 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 yeah, so Do you want me to speak? Okay. Mm. I took Good. the camera calibration parameter from Apollo. Uh, it's one of the folders. Copy and paste, but in the same format that they have. I basically took one of these files and then <laughs> put the same numbers but in here. Uh, similar with the YAML file, it's, uh, you have to set up the IMU topic, the camera topic. Uh, you can play the ROS back and see which topics is publishing the camera and the IMU. Uh, indicate the camera calibration file. Uh, the image size, and I think I didn't touch any of the other parameters. Mm. Oh. oh yes, uh, the IMU. No, I didn't. I didn't change this, but I did change this one. Mm. Uh, it's indicated in the Aquadoc website. Or I don't remember right now when I read it, uh, or in the file. It was in the file, I'm pretty yeah, sure. The, yeah. The time difference between estimated between the camera. Publication of the, cam uh, the camera frame and the IMU reading. And that's it. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> cool. Okay, guys, I think that's going to be it for me. So thank you very much and yeah, have a great rest of the week. And I hope it wasn't too crazy. <laughs> Thank you. Wow.